On-tap plumbing and gas covers all Perth areas from Mandurah to Two Rocks and has a team of plumbing, drainage and hot water experts. They have an amazing reputation for their excellent service and quality workmanship on time, every time, and it is easy to see why they are a favourite to many Perth property managers. Whether you just need some friendly advice or an obligation-free quote, look no further than On Tap Plumbing and Gas. Welcome to the PM Collective, a dynamic hub designed to empower business owners, property managers and BDMs to excel in their careers. Through access to intimate conversations, cutting edge of video training, mental health support and unparalleled motivation, our community is the ultimate destination for individuals seeking to elevate their professional lives to new heights. So sit back, relax and enjoy our next conversation on our weekly podcast, The Art of Property Management. Today, we have the lovely Donna Fortune joining us. Now, we are coming with a little bit of a slightly, um, a slight different angle than what we normally do because Donna, you are not a property manager, are you? I am not. I am far from a property manager. (laughs) Tell me what you do now. I know we're going to go into um, a different angle with private landlords, but just um, tell us about what um, your job is at the moment. Well, I'm actually a brand photographer, as you well know. Um, and this, very strangely, is my first ever podcast. So it's 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 just a laughable moment that it's not about my business or photography. It's about something completely different. And and that's what we love having on the um, with the podcast and with the conversations is they just come from different angles, and there is always a way we can bring it back to property management, and right. it's an enjoyable listen. And for those that haven't been on a podcast before, I can assure you that they are very safe and Donna has actually asked me whether I edit which I don't edit so I've told her not to make any mistakes today but there's nothing out of bounds anyway but it, it's funny like before we sort of start recording um before we started recording this Donna was sort of asking about questions and all of that and I said Donna you're overthinking it we're just having a little chat which is exactly what we're doing today so I appreciate <laughs> that you are confident in me just to come on with no script and let's Absolutely. take control of the conversation. So just fire away, Ash. <laughs> so, I mean, let's just um, really briefly just have a little bit of a talk about the personal branding and the photography. So is that an industry that's uh, really picking up these days or are people still struggling to put themselves out there? Oh, my gosh. I think it's completely picking up. I feel like people just know that they've seen everybody else putting themselves out there and they want to do it too. And, yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get that confidence. But, yeah, the effort you put in so pays off. Having just done one of my own for the first time, I can totally relate to how good it's going to feel to have a bit more of my own professional shots out there. Yeah, definitely. And I think that sometimes I get people say to me, oh, Ash, you know, but you're photogenic or this or that. And people always have those comments to make. And what I would say in response to that is that 200 photos have been taken of me by a photographer. (laughs) And there might be three or four photos that are actually okay out of that. But do not think for a minute that everyone has fabulous photos. It's, um, there's a lot of photos taken to find the right, you know, five or 10 images. Yeah, there's a lot of deletes that happen in the editing phase. But having said that, I find that like with my clients, I get loads of images. Now, of course, they're going to have a few that they're going to go, "Eh, yuck, I can't stand that. But generally speaking, yeah, I still find there are so many usable images and it's just, it's just so exciting to put those out there to them. Yeah, and I love those uh, those images where it might be someone where their eyes are closed because they were laughing, yeah. or you know those those imperfect those um, imperfection moments. I guess uh, absolutely. Like, yeah. So yeah, and they're they're actually the ones I love the most. As much as like everybody wants those picture perfect ones, I don't know. Like I don't always seem to. You know, sometimes there's a hair out of place that I'll completely miss, or a hand may not look perfect, but there's something in somebody's face that cannot be you know put aside it's like that's just an awesome capture of somebody in a really private well not private but just a personal moment showing something very personal about themselves and they are the images that really grab people yeah and and it's bringing out that personality which I have just done a podcast um, as a guest for someone else and I talked about the two things that are missing with personal branding and one of them is the humanizing and that 
that, that um, personality yeah. behind the images. And just to remind yeah. to everyone out there, your headshot doesn't really give me a personality. A headshot's a headshot. You need you need more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I always find like, I, it, I quite often joke about personal branding and I feel like it's become quite cliched about like, oh, you've got to have your laptop and a cup of coffee and, and, you know, capture yourself doing this big hearty laugh or something like that. But there's just, yes, that's the cliche and they're great images. They look awesome on, on social media, but there's just so much more to everybody's personal. And that's what you want to bring in, whether, whether that be in a prop or whether that be in your personality. Yeah. There's so much more to it. It can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're going to get into a little bit of a different type of personal. Um, <laughs> and you telling me that you had a rental property, you went through a property manager, and then you decided to self manage. So I thought this yes. was a really good opportunity to have a chat to someone like yourself who has done that and the reasons for it, because it's good for us as property managers to hear. Maybe maybe there was no reason, maybe there was a very valid reason, um, yeah. or maybe there was, but I think it's really good for us to hear it from a landlord's point of view of why you made the decision and maybe any hiccups or concerns or whether you found it easy or hard. It'd be great to hear your story. <laughs> so, um, so you start off by telling me um, in regards to, let's start from the basics, you have a, a property and you needed a property manager. Out of curiosity, what drew you to um, having a property manager in the first place? Like when you were researching property managers, what were you looking for? Were you fee driven? Um, was it down to personality? What did you um, yeah. think when making that decision? Yeah, I would probably, in all honesty, I think originally when we came to it, we'd had this rental property for quite some time. My mum had been living in it for many years. We got to a point where she was going to be moving out. So it was going to be the first time that we rented it out, you know, to somebody else. So uh, it came down to what have I got more of, time or money? And at that point in time, before my business was taking off and growing and I was predominantly stay-at-home mum, I had more time than than money. And I was like, how hard can this be? But I, although I thought that, we were a little bit a little bit too newbie. So we were like, let's start off, let's have a property manager get the tenants in because we knew that would be a pretty big, <laughs> a pretty big thing um to to start off with. So yeah, so for the we had a property manager come in and when I was researching, yeah, price definitely came into it. But in the end it was personality. It was um who did we who did I feel like I clicked with and trusted to to have that relationship with. So yeah, we chose somebody, they got a great tenant in and signed a year lease. And then at the end of that 12 months, I think it was at that point that it was like, all right, now I think we can take this on ourselves and give it a go. How hard can it be? So what, but. So I, I actually just had this discussion with my partner, actually, and we're talking about how a property manager can set up a really amazing tenant and everything to be running really smoothly, no hiccups, no problems. And sometimes from a landlord's point of view, they would say, you know, it's, it's we've got a great tenant, it's going to be easy, let's do it. As opposed to if that tenant was maybe a bit more of a headache or a little bit more complicated, um, you might have been less likely to do it yourself. So would that be a yeah. fair statement? Did you make that decision because you had a pretty good tenant? Yeah, definitely. That was 100% it. We knew that they were staying on. They'd been fabulous, um, very easy. And so I knew, all right, we've already got a tenant there. We don't have to go through that process again. And I wouldn't do it myself, I, I don't think, if I had to go through the process of actually vetting tenants and, you know, doing all that. So, yeah, we knew they were there. And so we just carried it on and, and it they ended up being there for another five years. <laughs> During that five years, did you renew their lease or did you just let them stay on periodical? Yeah, well, I think there were three, three years in a row where we renewed it. And then it got to a point where they wanted to go onto a periodic. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Sensor Global saves lives with automatic compliance and manages smoke alarms, gas and water leak detection with 24-7 remote management. It provides complete control, reduced risks and improved compliance for property managers. To find out more, speak to Anthony Booth or head over to sensorglobal.com. 
you know, like in, I'm sure some of the answers you were, you were thinking of like, well, what did, what did you do? And I think I was continuously online on the phone to Department of Mines and industry and researching. And although it's not hard stuff, it, it got very time consuming. And I think that's where I started to go, hmm, is my time now? worth worth this. So I ultimately we sold the property last year and had we have not, I would have gone back to an agent at that point. Yeah, okay. That's good to hear. So then the the things that you were calling up demons for, were they like are you able to share sort of an example, like not, I mean in too much detail, but would it was it to yeah. do like maybe rent or maintenance or what sort of complications and um, needed you to do that yeah I think just those everyday things a first of all is like a lease you know I I kind of could go off first lease was you know with the property manager I kind of like doctored up some of that but then when you're adding annexures and things like that I was like am I doing the right thing so I would continuously be calling them in and then giving property uh you know notice to if you're coming in for a rental inspection you know just all those little logistics that legally you have to you have to be doing the right thing and you want to be respectful to your tenant as well. And and like I said, I, our tenants were great and I really wanted to do the right thing by them. But sometimes that led into a very personable thing where sometimes you wouldn't pick up on things because you're embarrassed. I'm like, I'm in somebody's home and I, I didn't want to do a property inspection. I was kind of felt like I was in somebody's private space. And, and whereas if I'd had a property manager, you guys just go in there and you, and you do it and there's no personal involved that's that's what your job is and yeah so I was starting to have issues like that where I didn't want to do well, I want to go in and do the property the stuff well knowing your personality I would when you told me sort of how you were managing the property privately after having an agent and I thought to myself oh gosh Donna is is far <laughs> too you know like I can see you feel really awkward like with you know, like not wanting to do the wrong thing and just wanting to be so nice all the time. And I can see you wanting to be so nice. (laughs) I can see that being... um... I'd make those like those appointments, you know, those annual things where I'd go in and and I'd meet and it would just be like very nice. And I, you know, I'm obviously confident and all that kind of stuff. But then when it got to the point of like, all right, well, I'll just go around and have a little look around. I mean, I wouldn't look. I just kind of like walk into each room, but I trusted them as well, you know, so I knew there was nothing going to be majorly wrong. But yeah, like I, even if I saw a little mark somewhere, there was no way I was going to mention it because I'd just be far too awkward. No, that's right. So it was more like that you were doing it because you meant to do an inspection. So I'm going to do an inspection as yeah. opposed to doing yeah. it because of the need to do it. And yeah. so during that time, did you increase the rent? Oh, uh, you know, funnily enough, we only did it once at yes. the very end, right before we sold it, a few months before we sold it, we'd like gone through that process of like, oh, I think, I think we should probably put up the rent because again, when you're in this personal relationship with somebody, you kind of know what that means to somebody's family. You know what that means to them financially to be putting up the rent. And sometimes you don't do it, even though it, you know, your own family could be suffering with paying the mortgage on that property, but you don't want to put somebody else in that situation. So yeah, there was all sorts of reasons why we would have gone to a property manager. And then of course you have to research the market and and not being in the the industry, you don't really know if what you're charging is fully market value for that time. So yeah, so we did put it up, but I think we put it up like a ridiculous $30 a a week or something like that in that very high market where it was taking off. And yeah, so once in five years, we put it up. Yeah, yeah. And which is very consistent with private landlords. So that does not surprise me. Um, And I think start. I've I've got a friend who we very similar. He has managed his property, had a tenant in there for a couple of years and it actually came time to increase the rent and he was he actually said Ash I really don't want to increase the rent um, because of their situation but I sort of want to get a bit more market rate too so because he was a friend I said hey you can you can do this yourself but I have to trust the tenants you can do it directly and he's just negotiating a new lease now with the tenants now that it's been you know another year and he's definitely yeah. finding a little bit awkward but fortunately he's got me as someone he can reach out to and he, now he and he can yeah. play me he can say to the tenants he can say oh i've spoken to my real estate agent and they've advised 
this price. Exactly. That yeah, you're like the middle. You're the person who is like you're the buffer in between the the two, so it doesn't turn into a personal thing. It's like it's a business transaction. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It's um, it, and I think at the start, you at the very early days of managing a property, you're more likely to sort of not increase the rent. And I think a lot of private landlords, not sure if you did this or not, you justified the amount of money you're saving on fees and go, oh well, you know what, we're managing it ourselves now, so I probably don't need to increase the rent this time. Like, yeah. was that a thought? Yeah. And yeah, and then you you also think if you increase the rent, are those tenants are going to go, oh, well, maybe we'll go find somewhere else. And then you could be out of, you know, rent in the short term or long term if, you, if your property is empty for a while. So you just kind of, you go, oh, keep the status quo. Everything's just smooth. It's just fine. We'll keep it as is. And yeah. Yeah. And it just goes to show everyone that's listening and from someone like yourself that the probably the biggest daunting part of the process was probably maybe the setting up of the tenant, finding the tenant, advertising, and that once that's all good and sorted and you've got the security of they've been in the property for six or 12 months, it, you yeah. know, I can maintain it, which is totally fine. But I would probably also add on that everything's fine till it's not fine. And this yes. is what property managers need to also make sure that they are not seen as just a transactional service. So, I mean, and you, I mean, you know me, it's no disrespect to you, but as a private landlord, sometimes yeah. people can just think, oh, I can handle my own maintenance and my tenants pay rent all the time. So this process is easy and, and they're right, it is, but that's why it's in our job as a property manager <laughs> to value add. So not only are you staying with a property manager, you are getting your rent paid, the maintenance organised, but maybe, and I'm just dribbling out loud with this conversation, <laughs> but, uh, but it would be like maybe making sure that that owner has got a maintenance plan or renovation plan for the next 12 months so that you can assist them maintaining the value. Maybe you are doing yeah. it CMA and um, doing a sales and rental appraisal on a regular basis for them. So you're giving them that. Maybe you are holding investor education evenings with further education for them on a regular basis. Something more than just looking yeah. like you're paying rent and collecting rent <laughs> and doing maintenance. Yeah, but the maintenance thing, I haven't touched on that, but that's just kind of like twigged something in me. That was another reason was because, you know, somehow it always ended up if we were on vacation, something would go wrong with the property. And, you know, there was this one time where my husband and I had gone away. It was our first time away together without kids in, you know, like forever. And we were in Thailand. And then we got a message that the oven was broken. So you know, it's like, what do you do? We're on this beautiful, <laughs> we're spending, you know, five days away together. And we're there on the computer looking at good guys trying to buy an oven and then trying to find an electrician. And all of a sudden, tradesmen are nowhere to be found and so it was like this whole big thing and then we were off going to this island that had no wi-fi so we had to try and get it done and it was you know it just kind of ruined the moment and it, that happened a couple of times when we were away you know like the air conditioning had broken or whatever and you know you can't as a landlord you you can't let that go and just say sorry I'm on vacation you know but had we have had an agent you guys would have just taken care of it and you know it would have been well worth the the fees that we would have been paying yeah so given so yeah then given that if there was and again I'm just dribbling dribbling words right now <laughs> just getting my like creative juices thinking um yeah if there was a property manager who broke down their service and had a fee for rent collection a fee for maintenance and then fees for other items would that be something that you would have been um like attracted to or not necessarily? Yeah. Do you mean like almost like a piecemeal, just pick out what you want as a service? Yes. Yeah, that's right. So for example, yeah. like if a management fee um, at the moment, let's just call it 10% for argument's sake, and but 5% yeah. was a rent collection fee and 5% was the, the maintenance um, and yeah. the management, would you like, and then people could decide if they just want the rent collection and all of that paperwork or they can decide whether they want that and the maintenance side of things or maybe you know what I mean like would that yeah that, yeah would it work 
Yeah, definitely. And I remember like when I was first shopping it, that was one of the questions I asked was like, do you have a fee just to get a, a, you know, like a tenant in to begin with and then we take over? And nobody did at that point. You know, you had to kind of sign up for a year or, or whatever. So, yeah, definitely. Because not me for example, I'm not like maintenance girl, but like a lot of people like to do their own maintenance, you know, on their property. So that might be a benefit to someone who's like, I want to go in and, and take care of all the maintenance and things that go wrong. So yeah, I would think that would definitely be a benefit to some. And I think there'll be people that, that are going to be a little negative Nancy on this subject, but you know what, listen to you for a little <laughs> minute while I talk about it. There is, uh, yeah. like with we've got some really great maintenance programs and the one that I'm using at the moment is called Tapi and it really is an amazing, um, amazing software that we use. And what is amazing about it, and I don't, I know this isn't the intention of it, but I reckon it could be tweaked for it. If maintenance comes through from a tenant, it's logged through. Now, I have the choice on this program to send that to the owner for approval or send it to the owner. Imagine like an owner wanting to do their own maintenance. And so through that program, it's still being logged. But the property manager knows that that owner likes to arrange their own maintenance. So you just send that work order to the owner and he sorts it out. Like, I think we yeah. can get to a point in the industry where that, where that could be an option. Yeah, definitely. I didn't even know there was like that you'd used, you know, that's how much it's changed since obviously I was was using a property manager. It's like, oh, okay, look at how technology has allowed you to do that even. So that's yeah, pretty cool. Exactly. And then some people maybe just want the rent collection for like the, the paperwork, you know, the statements each month, yeah. uh, record keeping and things like that. Yeah. I, mean, I know that it's probably not the best business decision for a real estate agency to break down the services. But I, you know, in changing markets, you have to, you know, judge things up a little bit. And um, yeah. it's something that could be an option for um, clients. And what we're seeing at the moment as well, and in you um, you sort of being not being in the industry, you probably haven't heard of it, but there's a lot of different changes to our fee structures. So you're probably used to the variable, which we talked about, but there's also yep. like a subscription model in a way where you pay just a weekly amount. So a set weekly amount, whether the property's rented or not rented, yeah. you still pay. And, and then that covers the, the management of the property. And so it doesn't really matter whether your rent goes up or doesn't go up. It still stays the same, the fee. And that's, Really? Well, the concept, I mean, it makes sense because the cost yeah. of the higher end versus a lower end isn't always different. It can be, but not always. But it's mm -hmm. just such an interesting topic just to like nut out and talk to people about and, you know, get opinions because we, right. we charge like just because like we charge fees what just based on the market and what other people do. We fall into that trap of, oh, the going rate for inspections is this much. So that's right charge and you know back to sort of your work photography work there's um you're probably a little bit different but it's um you can fall into a trap of I just charge this because that's the going rate for branding shoots or that's the going rate for headshots but you know do you actually go back and go well I'm worth this much and this is how much I am going to charge and you can yes. take leave it yeah, I think so. Because I, going back to you within, yeah, within your industry, the, when you are within an industry, you can kind of get kind of blinded by it and not look outside and go, hey, we can do this differently. You, I think you just tend to do it the way it's done because that's the way it's always been done. And and there's the, the not the danger, but just, you know, you fall into that comfort zone of, oh, okay, so-and-so is charging this, so we can charge, you know, similar. We don't want to go maybe too high or too low. And yeah. And so, yeah, same with photography. You kind of, yes, you're aware of what a kind of standard rate is, but yeah, at the end of the day, you have to look at, well, what are you, what are you offering? What do you value that's maybe different? And then charge what you feel is, a, you know, appropriate for that. Yeah, and, and sometimes just being different is enough to stand out in the industry and, you know, it doesn't always come down to the, the price as such. And so that's why talking about that value yeah. add and what people are bringing in. And, I mean, like, yeah, you can do value any in any industry can do value add. So it's, it's good to hear from someone like yourself where you've been a private landlord, why your decision was 
was made. So your decision purely yeah. was made because you had what you considered and was a safe tenant. Yeah. And and I mean, do you, would it be fair to say, therefore, you didn't value the price you were paying to have it managed because you didn't feel like there was a lot that was needing to be done? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I probably, my situation was probably a little bit different than many because originally when we bought the pop, the property, we were living in the US and we bought it as a, you know, just an investment to have here. But because we were living in the US and my husband obviously is a US citizen, the title of this one went in my name. And then we're going back close to 20 years ago now when we did it. So then when we moved back and it was a whole different story and we're paying taxes and all that kind of stuff, we couldn't really, because my name was on the title and I really didn't have much of an income at all back then. It it didn't work out for us tax wise, you know? So we couldn't necessarily, you, it, it didn't, it wasn't advantageous to us to have those fees and just use it as a tax deduction sort of thing. So yeah, we were a little bit different than most people. So yeah, when we looked at that, it was like, it's not going to benefit us as a write-off on the property um, because it was, it was, I basically had no income to, to, you know, work against. So yeah, so a little bit different there. But yeah, I think at the end, I think it was like, yes, I've got time. We were obviously, you know, we were mostly one um, income household. And it was like, hey, this is how I can add to my family's um, savings and and things like that is to do it. And I thought, well, obviously I'm capable of doing it. (laughs) But it, it, you know, several years later, it definitely was like, oh no, this is, this is getting way too much of a, you know, a hassle. (laughs) So the Last question, if you had an investment property and needed to rent it out, would you now do it yourself or would you use a property manager? You can be honest. No, honest. I would, yeah, no, I think I'd still use a property manager at, because my situation is different. I'm I'm working more. I don't have as much time. Um, so, yeah, then it gets to your quality of, of life and time, you know, effort, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, no, I think, and we'd have it set up differently. <laughs> where, you know, we could use the tax benefits and all that kind of stuff. So yes, if we had another rental property, yes, I would use a, yeah, a property manager. And and for and just as a joke, anyone um, that wants to sign Donna Fortune up as a landlord, make sure you do a nice long yeah. contract for her so that she doesn't get a good tenant and wants to do it herself. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, that's my funny. Tip, that's yeah, no. Tip for the day. Yeah. No, I'm all for property managers these days. It's like, you know what you're doing. You do it well. You save us time. It's all, yeah, very well done. That's right. I'm teasing you, Donna. It's all right. <laughs> So, um, but, also, but, but also, I guess it just highlights the importance of that value add and not tr- don't be transactional and just find some nice, easy yeah. ways as a property manager that you can add value to that client so that they are definitely yeah, not perceiving it as the, the renter and the maintenance and that's the core job, And which I know that you yeah. know that. So um, the, but for other, other people out there that might take their property, whether it's to take it to look after it privately or whether it's to take it to have someone else manage it. Uh, and we are seeing a little bit of a shift in management these days between agencies. It um, all, I do believe, comes down yeah, to that value add service. And um, there's lots of cheap, free, easy ways that you can educate the clients, show them yeah. value and, um, and yeah, definitely continue to push for that and uh, reinvent the education wheel for property managers to landlords um, yeah. so that they can see that value. Yeah. And a lot of the value is in your, is in your connection and your, um, how you deal with, with people as well. You know, so it's like, if you have a good relationship with somebody, you're willing to pay more for that relationship as well. So don't underestimate the quality of what you're giving just in being yourself and being a good person and, you know, having a relationship with that person at the same time. Yeah, and the best way to showcase that is through some personal branding photos <laughs> Donna can help you with as well. Yes, bring it back. <laughs> See how I tied that in? So. Don, Donna is, um, I have a lot of listeners all around Australia, but Donna is based in um, in Perth and is a fabulous photographer. And she will um, travel to anywhere in Australia to do 
<laughs> there you go. So anyone in Australia can access Donna, but um, you are an absolute delight to know and, um, <laughs> and talk to. And um, yeah, and, and again, I am going to give you that plug for photography because more people do need to be uh, getting professional photography done. Yeah. Um, Donna does my headshots in the office as well um, for my team. And actually, I've got two more team members starting in a couple oh. of weeks. So I'll have of course you do. Always I'll growing. Have... Always got new people coming in. I, I, I'm very we'll lucky. In. Yeah, very <laughs> lucky to have two new people, which is because of growth, which is really yeah, good. I'll, awesome. have, I'll have you in for some headshots for that, which will be great. And um, But definitely that, that lifestyle photography, I think, is, is wonderful to have. And um, yeah. and if you don't have it, I like I said, I would probably do mine. Maybe I try to do personal branding photos every about 12 to 18 months, just so there's always yeah. a variety. Um, yeah. Exactly. And um, yeah, it should be done. They're great. They, and I think you get them and then you're excited to actually put yourself out there. You're like, oh, I kind of I kinda like these photos. And you're like, yeah. oh. And that's what encourages you to put them out there because you like the photos of yourself. 100%. And it's funny because I see people get new photos done and then like they have all of those same sort of style photos like one after another. And I always get a little bit paranoid about it. That's why I like having mine done regularly. So I yeah. can switch them up a little bit with my colours and styles. Yeah. So it doesn't look like oh, Ash has just had a branding shoot and now that's all. She's just throwing them out. (laughs) Bombardment of like, look at me, look at me. Exactly. (laughs) So maybe that would be our little tip for personal branding is if you do um, get Donna in, then just have a different coloured jacket so that you look a little bit different. And um, yeah. Yeah. The great thing for me is like I can break myself up with my clients. So I can kind of filter me in every now and then. So and then, oh, my clients have got all the different looks. So Okay, well, I look forward to seeing your personal branding. Um, yeah, so, me too, me too. They're in the editing process, so I'm excited. I know that waiting game is, um, I'm so impatient. Like, hurry up. <laughs> yes, I'm more out. patient than you, Ash, so you know that. Well, you know how long the editing takes. That's probably why you're being a bit more gentle and know yeah. what it's like to have a client hassle you for, for editing as well. So you're yeah. not going to do the same to the next person. <laughs> Donna, it was lovely talking to you. Thank you. I'll have um, details tagged in as well. If anyone wants to touch base with Donna, please um, please touch base. She's uh, beautiful to deal with. Thanks, Ash. That was great. Thanks for having me. No worries. Co provide reliable, fully trained professionals to assist you with running and scaling your property management department, providing high quality pre trained virtual assistants ready to hit the ground running and revolutionize the way you run your portfolio, ensuring your time is spent doing the high value tasks inside your rent roll that really matter. Not long ago, VAs within a business were considered a luxury. Now they are a staple for any business needing reliable support without the headache of traditional staffing. To find out more, head over to theassociatesco.com.